Moving further, we are having a very interesting session and for that I would like to call on stage for a special address by Dr. Siri Ram Birudavolu, CEO, Cybersecurity Center of Excellence, Data Security Council of India. We welcome you, sir. Hello, everyone. Let my slides come up. Post-lunch session, always a challenge. I hope I do make it interesting for you. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you see many logos here. So I'm from the Cyber Security Center of Excellence, NASCOM DSCI. DSCI, Data Security Council of India, is the cyber security arm of NASCOM, which is the industry body, IT industry body. And our Cyber Security Center of Excellence is based in Hyderabad, hence government of Telangana also pitched in and said, help us build a cyber cluster here. That's where we are. So I thought I would share some things with you, which would be good takeaways for you, as well as uh, continue to, so that we continue to engage in areas that would help you. Okay, so navigating the challenges of uh, in the digital cloud space, uh, due to shortage of time, I'll not repeat the stuff that many of the team, mem many of the esteemed members have done. Uh, so actually, thanks very much to the government of Madhya Pradesh, to the team here, wonderful team at uh, APEC News Network, and the uh, participants here, all the esteemed get guests who have uh, been part of the speakers and the ones who are attending. Uh, thank you so much, really, for giving this opportunity. So, yeah, the next slide. So, a few eye-openers for you that possibly you know this, but uh, where is this? Sorry. Yeah. This is even a few years old, pre-pandemic one. I would deliberately put up so that the pandemic effect would not be reflected here. 52% of the Fortune 500 companies have been merged, acquired, and have gone bankrupt since 2000. If you take the post-pandemic ones, the figures will be much higher. Okay, this is the fate of Fortune 500 companies with billions of dollars at their disposal. They could have set up any labs, commissioned any research team, whether it's McKinsey, Harvard, you name it, they could have done it, set up labs, but this was the, the fate. Which path are you going to take? Cloud native is difficult, but not doing it is worse. How does that come into the picture with this? The reason is that there is severe disruption. Okay, if you take the top trillion dollar companies in the world, they're all IT companies, and many of them cloud companies. Next. So one more bit of, uh, okay. If you look at this, one more piece of data for you. Over the last 50 years, 50 to 60 years, the average lifespan of companies on the standards and poor find it. Once again, big, big heavyweights have shrunk from 60 years to 18 years. This is the lifespan of the entire company. Okay, so life, stand, life cycles are faster than ever before. Disruption is happening at an astonishing pace. That is what we need to be very much aware of, which means that even if you are government, the underlying things are going to get disrupted very, very fast and innovation is moving ahead at breakneck speed because you're closely connected to the ecosystem you're delivering services for the people and the businesses and to make your ecosystem thrive and grow. That is the reason why you need to be extremely aware of this. So next, yeah, sorry. I've... So here's a, let's look at the magnitude of the cyber problem. So many speakers have given so many references and all that. Sorry, I've just moved around. Is there a mic that I can hold? Yeah. Can I hold a, any mic that I can hold? Yeah. So what happens is, this is, if cyber crimes were an economy, you'd find that it is an $8 trillion economy, which is the third largest economy in the world. Okay, USA, 24 trillion. Numbers may have changed slightly. China, 18 trillion. Cyber crimes is 8 trillion. And next is Japan, which is 4 trillion, and Germany, which is 4 trillion. Then India comes at around 3 or 3 and a half, recently became 4. Okay which is half of that cyber crimes. Remember, the next one, Japan. <laughs> okay, so you're dealing with the size of problem, which you're, what are you going to do about something which is so big? Next one, why is cloud security important? Okay, I will not, once again, in the slides, I'm not going to put what is cloud, what is security, and all this, when you, the earlier speakers have done a fantastic job of it. Okay. So this is very briefly, why is cloud security important? Protection of sensitive data, compliance, regulatory threats, uh, what is that uh, 
evolving cyber threats, business continuity, reputation, trust, economic uh, factors, scalability, and reliability, customer trust helps in disaster recovery management and also cost effective. And all the powers that be, whether it is RBI or whether it is the government Maiti or certain, they are all keenly aware of this and they have formulated guidelines. More are going to come, okay, as the industry and landscape evolve. My earlier speaker spoke about IoT. After 5G is enabled, IoT, IoT devices may simply boom, skyrocket, and new business models may evolve, which means cloud will need to cater to all of those, right? So it will no longer be uh, human to machine, but machine to machine and IoT and so on. So that is why cloud security is very important, very, very important cloud security. Okay. So what is the cloud security when you talk so much about cloud? The native cloud stack, what does it look like? Okay, here's a brief idea. Don't expect you to read every bit of it, but please understand a whole new game is evolving in which right from CI, CD, continuous integration, continuous development, software development. So again, DevSecOps is important there to distribute tracing, logging, okay, service mesh, monitoring, service mesh, so on, orchestration, backup and restore, storage, networking, Container runtime and compute infrastructure. Obviously, when the stack is becoming so complex, that is one of the prime reasons why you're moving to from the on-premise to the cloud in the first place. People want the benefits of technology, not the technology itself, not the complexity of technology itself. If you were to ask anyone on the street, do you use Linux? He will say no, right? Do you use Google? He will say yes. Google who uses Linux. So he's using Linux, whether he like <laughs> he knows about it or not. So you don't want the whole horrible complexity of setting up the email server. The modern day email server is very complex. Okay, and similarly all the other things, but you would like the small app on your phone. Okay, similarly everything, a small app, CRM, everything. So you would like to have SaaS, you would like to have everything, okay, search. You don't want those horrible complex. Then who's going to do those horrible complexities are expert sitting there. So when the expertise is concentrated, it becomes much easier for everyone. Otherwise, you would have to find experts to run your show, which is the reason, one of the primary reasons, in my opinion, why things are moving to cloud also, okay? It offers extremely good optimization of resources. Okay, so this is the cloud native stack. Why are companies still afraid of using it? Security and performance, you see the top two reasons. And of course, availability and many of the other things, regulatory requirements are also. These may keep shifting based on the time. For example, supposing a new certain guidelines have been launched, certainly people will, or rather directives, that you need to report something within a certain number of hours, six hours. This will keep going up and down, but security remains at the top. Okay. So we live in a very cloudy world. So a, a brief this thing glimpse of what we do as Cybersecurity Center of Excellence and who are we to stand on the stage and be talking about all this is that primarily we have three goals. One is to strengthen the posture of cybersecurity and privacy in the ecosystem. NASCOM being an industry body, it's, we, it's not as if we are just uh, catering to uh, IT companies which are exporting and wonderful export markets, our manpower is being used, not all those things. All around us, the infrastructure needs to be very strong and resilient so that we can attract more investments and we can prosper as an economy. So to strengthen this posture of cybersecurity and privacy in the ecosystem, we'll do it in every way possible, including policy, including implementation frameworks, etc. Then help the industry capture a share of the $2 trillion market out there. <clears throat> what is a problem is also an opportunity. What happens if the industry does not invest $2 trillion or the ecosystems around the world do not invest $2 trillion, there are going to be damages worth $12 trillion. I just showed you where we are at the damages. We are already the third largest economy in the world in terms of cyber crimes. So that is simply going to zoom through the roof and go to $12 trillion. And many are not even reported properly. A third is to accelerate innovation and entrepreneurship in cybersecurity space. Innovation and entrepreneurship are two entirely different things. Okay. For example, a tea shop vendor may be an entrepreneur. He's not an innovator. He's doing the same thing over and over again. So in for startups and all, both are required very much. Okay. So we incubate about 40 cybersecurity startups. A brief report following the zigzag 
not expect you to read all this, but probably many speakers have given a report on cloud breaches, right? Because the number of data, the amount of data being generated is a lot. Of that, the critical important data, personal data and all those things, those are going to be very, very important. The intellectual property, uh, so many trade secrets, so many of the data which are there, extremely important. So cloud security is the top concern pertaining to organizations. Here is the breakup for people who may want to know what is the real breakup. Is it really $2 trillion or what is it? Here's the breakup, it's a McKinsey report. You're welcome to download and read. So a brief about how the state, since there are many people from the Madhya Pradesh state and all, how the state is really, like Telangana state, is gearing up towards cybersecurity. So you see that because of that, the IT exports have grown by 31.4% and employment grew by 16. And of in India, Telangana contributed to a total lion's share of 44% of total uh, India's total IT employment, although occupying a small percentage in terms of uh, the population. So there is clean forex growth from 2014 to 2023 and so on. And so many companies have set up data centers in uh, the state. So here are some of the areas that may enable these large data centers and all to be found. Infrastructures, corporate connect, government procurement, mentorship, academic connect, and funding. Okay. So there are now, this slightly older, but about 7,000 plus startups in Telangana. They contribute heavily. Lot of them will uh, use cloud or be SaaS products also, because that's the easier way. Frictionless innovation. They can easily launch products, test them out, scaling, take them out and all. Investment required will be less. So there are many entities which help that, ranging from T-Hub to our own cybersecurity center of excellence and all. So usually this is slide is put at the last, but I'll tell you. By now you realize that cloud security is a very complex thing. So here is the offering. We are going to hold a cloud security workshop and program. So you're welcome to join that. You can please connect with us. My name and email ID are given here, number. Okay, you can take a photo, you can contact me. The second is, by now you again would have realized that how important vendor contracts have become. You're obviously outsourcing it when you're doing a cloud deployment, right? So depending on how much you're outsourcing depends on whether you're going for infrastructure as a service, uh, platform as a service, software as a service, and so on. So if you are doing that, then your contracts need to be drawn up really well. One of the things of cloud computing, one of the effects of cloud computing is that you need to have deadly super good contracts. Otherwise you'll run up huge bills without accomplishing your tasks and your unutilized infrastructure or you have risks which are very high, okay? Or it doesn't cater to your needs and so on. So ranging from third party risks management to vendor management, you need to have vendor contracts. We are going to hold a special session on that, a workshop on that. All of you are welcome to join. Of course, many of these, will, some of these will be paid workshops, some of these. Then third is cyber startups. So there are about 300 plus cyber startups in India. I'm talking about homegrown domestic Indian cyber security startups. Okay. Services companies are many. These are product startups, okay, of which we are incubating about 40. So you need to run acceleration program to be able to get the best out of them. Okay. Because not the only ones which are established companies, please look at these startups, some of them are award winning. Startups serve to remove inefficiencies from the system. You should be in a position, no matter which one, whether you're government or corporate, you should utilize startups. Okay, so the earlier you do, the better it is. And how do you distinguish between which is a good one and bad one because over 90% of startups fail? That is where industry bodies like us, we come in. Okay, so if you have noticed carefully, from the past 20, 30 years, all the ones which are trillion dollar companies were startups before that. Okay, so whether you take Facebook or Apple or Google or so, so on. So uh, today's uh, companies are a little wary that some startup will come and pull the rug under their feet. So they themselves are going out <laughs> and investing, corporates are investing in startups, running accelerator programs and investing, co-creating, working with them, using their solutions and all that they will help you much faster. They have very sharp 
extremely good solutions. So that is the other thing that I'd like you to, there's a takeaway. Please contact us, we'll get you in touch with many of them. The fourth you need, you need to have is a very good cyber policy, which we uh, worked on several policies, both at state, national level. So you need to have very good policy. So for example, you're constructing websites. So currently we are drafting that policy for the state. You can utilize it. Okay, once it, it is released, you can utilize that policy or you can participate or so. So that how do you uh, develop websites? There are GIGW, which is Government of India guidelines for websites, but that is not sufficient enough. So we're developing a whole policy around that. So that please, let's be realistic. Supposing there is a department of tourism, they will not have expertise in developing websites. They will not have expertise in cybersecurity. And they will go out and give it to probably some vendor who's showing a jing bang, beautiful UI, UX on the uh, website and all this. Stuff. But many fundamental things like I showed you those stacks and all, they stack, the software stacks, and they are not going to be understanding all this. So then they need help. So what we will do is give a policy and then tell them that please follow this policy and we'll have checklists so that you can do that. That is the reason why this vendor contracts management and cyber policy are so important. Please get in touch with us, we will surely help. Okay, so that is one thing before I just move on. So you see that policy frameworks, institutional excellence, and government adoption, all these are there. So why I'm telling you all this is that we are walking the talk. Okay, to show that, yes, these are all in focus, and in emerging technologies, you have Institute of Excellence, Cybersecurity Mission, Telangana AI Mission, Blockchain District, Center for Additive Manufacturing, and so on are there. Okay, your mileage will vary, obviously, in all this. You will not do exactly what the other uh, states are doing. You will have your own unique advantages and different equations to deal with. So in this manner, there's one cloud COE also, if you look carefully, the bottom left. Hmm. Okay, so what are the different stakeholder groups that you need to deal with? Okay, in general, if you're like what we deal with. So one is the industry, the tech industry I'm talking about, which is the large, medium and small companies. In small companies, we are incubating startups. So about 40 startups are there. Large ones are all the large ones you can think of, whether it's Infosys, Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, and so on. And mid-sized load of companies are there. Then the government, what startups need access to market, access to capital, access to mentors and uh, talent, and so on. Government, okay, so government is central government, state government, law enforcement agencies, intelligence agencies, defense, policy making bodies, all of these. Then academia and R&D centers. We forged a number of collaborations. Academic and R&D centers, would, we would do hackathons, we do R&D, faculty development, student development, and programs, international events, all of these. So why are all these important? Because as an ecosystem play, they are very, very important. Uh, and we run a number of international programs. Sorry, I'm standing in the middle here. So the, these are extremely important to foster the growth. Luckily, AICTE, which is the Apex uh, Technical Education Body has approved a complete BTEC in cybersecurity. So many colleges are adopting it. And so in another two years, probably you will see batches and batches of cybersecurity people passing so that you will have no shortage of talent. You can cater to not only India's market, but entire foreign markets also. So because the shortage in cybersecurity is somewhere around some negative 15% or something, the shortage of talent in the cybersecurity area. So then user groups are the ones like banks, pharma, retail companies, and so on. So these are the user side. We run use case clearing house workshop to be able to capture the critical use cases out of this and then so that the tech industry can develop uh, good sold products and solutions. And finally, collaborations. We've collaborated with Netherlands, Hague Security Delta, Hague Center for Strategic Studies with City of London Corporation on cyber insurance and a number of universities around the world and so on. So that is the thing. So these probably are the focus areas. You think of cloud, you'll certainly have all of these areas. We have cl uh, cloud uh, security companies also. People may ask, what is the thing that is involved? Now when you dig, dig deep into it, what do you need? Okay, so who are the people we need? At the bottom, you'll find that there are technical skills. As you grow to the top, there are the CISOs and the global heads and all. In the middle are architects and all. This is the frequently we get that the whole thing is a fuzzy organization. What does it really comprise of? So, and the growing field of data privacy. 
So you see a number of roles that are going to come up. Extremely important, extremely good will there. Okay. So, okay, just a brief note on that. I think I'm running short of time, but br very brief note on that is that about 137 countries are going to adopt privacy laws like India. Now, if you take any company like Infosys, only a slice of its revenues comes from Indian markets. The remaining ones are export oriented. So that's extremely important. And even small companies. So one bad or a wrong notion I want to dispel that we have only in India, we have this wrong notion, is that MNC means big company. That's a wrong notion. In Taiwan, Korea, everywhere else, MNCs are all small companies, almost like cottage industries they are. They are able to export wonderfully well. So they are MNCs. Okay, so in India too. So what will happen is you can have many boutique companies come, many ones which are dealing with privacy. So if you are if you are dealing with 137 countries now, if you are doing business with any of those countries, you need to be compliant to their data privacy laws. Otherwise you cannot, you, you land severely, badly in a court of law or even in jail, the key people will land in that. I can tell you many cases where that has happened. So, but uh, you can contact me again to do that. So here is a brief thing of what we could manage to achieve. So many incubations, so many LEA law enforcement trained, international collaborations and so on. So many thousands of people professionally trained. So please do contact us. Here is a brief glimpse of the collaborations. Hague Security Delta, Hague Center for Strategic Studies, Cyber Quarter, Midlands, this is uh, Wolverhampton to many other. All the five pillars which I mentioned are here. Okay. So incubation, and we have about 40 startups. A very gl gl brief glimpse again of why this is a complex thing and why so many programs are needed and all this is, if you look at this cloud responsibility, your responsibility and vendor responsibility, how they are positioned. The stack is quite big and complex. And this is taken straight from a METI paper, which a METI has in fact listed out. There is a cloud paper on METI and uh, I mean, cloud re responsibility is what? Shared responsibility model. And here is another model. It says that best practices for user departments on cloud, typically aimed at the government sector. This is from a METI paper, Ministry of Electronics and Technology. And cloud security from different service providers. As you see, it, different service providers have their own offerings in various layers. And AI, for those of you know, AI, the emerging technologies, you may ask, have a question, how is that going to impact cloud security? So here is how it impacts. As I mentioned that we, we're going to hold a workshop or something, we will have several things covered to get you a deeper understanding. Please do join the workshops. And Cloud Security Alliance domains, 16 domains are there, Cloud Security Alliance, which translates to 52 control areas of cloud security. So please do, if there is nothing else, the takeaway is that it is a quite a complex game that we've gotten into for all the benefits that we want. Okay, so uh, you, we need help. We need help means you're relying on vendors, third party, which means that first you need to be very good at vendor management. We need to understand the subject and all this. So nowhere else there is vendor management more tags short of than in cloud. So please understand, you need to be a master of the game of third party risk management and all these things, right? Okay, so common cloud security threats. These are the common threats for those of you who are interested. And last one, I'm once again putting it up. For those of you who haven't noted, please get in touch with us and we'll be able to help you. Since this conference is pertaining to cloud security, I'll restrict myself to that. We have a number of other programs that you may be interested in. We will help you, okay. All right, so there are various other things I didn't want to because in interest of time, I'm not going to go through. Please follow us on LinkedIn. And we are ccoe.dsci.in and this is our LinkedIn ID. You can take a snapshot and follow us. Okay, and connect with us for the programs, right? With that, I'd like to conclude. If there are one or two questions, I can just take them quickly. Thank you again for your patient listening. Yeah. Uh,
Sriram ji, uh, this uh, model of COE is very good. In fact, uh, as a government of MP, we would like to understand in detail later on so that we can even think of creating such a kind of institutional structure, which is majorly, I guess, private led. And it is for the industry, by the industry. Wherein I think there is a very thin layer of the government support. So we would like to work on that. I mean, yes, we certainly. We will help you in every way. So okay. we like to understand the model of engagement and how you have created this institution, the DSCI, how it has helped, and how government of Telangana, what are their respons responsibility matrix and all. Yes, yes. So we would like to discuss. Certainly. So this is something which we were thinking. Yes. So this is, we can okay. emulate and create. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sriram, for sharing your invaluable insights. Uh, I would like to call on State Doctor uh, Mr. Aditya Singh, IAS Deputy Secretary, Department of Science and Technology, Government of Madhya Pradesh, to present a small token of appreciation to Dr. Sriram. Ram.